contracts now we are on our we will discuss form of contracts interpretations of contracts and reformation of contracts okay first we discuss form of contracts when we speak of form of contracts if the form of a contract refers to the manner in which a contract is executed and manifested kung paano ito ginawa at kung paano ito na ilabas the contract may be oral or in writing or partly oral or partly in writing if in writing it may be in public or a private instrument okay so gaya nga ng definition natin ng contract ang definition ng contract ay ito ay uh, meeting of mind so walang sinabi doon kung ito ay oral or written so kahit anong form pwede except may, mas maintindihan nyo yung exception later okay so ang sinasabi natin pwede itong oral or written however if a contract is partly in writing and partly oral ang legal effect nito ito ay oral contract tandaan nyo ha kung ito ay partly writing partly oral ito ay oral in nature okay so bakit importante yun kasi yung mga sinasabi natin na exception kasi pag sinabi ng batas na dapat ang kontrata ay written then it should be written pero kung wala namang sinabi ang batas na ito ay written then pwedeng oral ano-ano ba yung mga classifications according to form So, it may be informal or formal. Pag sinabi mong informal, or ito yung common contract, ito yung mga entered into in whatever form, provided all the requisites of their validity are present. Ano ba yung mga requisites ng contract? Dapat nandun. Okay? Consent, uh, object, and cost. Dapat kompleto yun. This refers only to sa tinatawag nating consensual contract. Um, kagaya ng contract of sale ng mga ordinaryong bagay. Of course, pag sinabi mo kasing contract of sale ng mga real property, ibang usapan na yun. Okay, but pero yung contract of sale ng mga movable, yun, yung mga madadaling madadaling bilhin. So, informal. Informal contract ang tawag natin doon. Because an informal contract may be oral or may be written. However, when you speak of formal, it is required by law for its efficacy. Nire-require ng law na ang ating formal, formal or solemn contract should be in a certain form required by law for its efficacy. So what are the rules regarding the form of contract? Una, the general rules are, or general rule is, of course, the contracts are binding and therefore enforceable reciprocally by the contracting parties. Pag sinabi mong enforceable reciprocally, ito ay pwedeng uh, ipagawa on both parties, reciprocal on both parties. Whatever may be the form in which the contract has been entered into provided all the three essential requisites again are present. That is the general rule. It is binding. Okay? Binding siya. At pwede siyang i-enforce sa parehong partido. Ano ang exception? The form, however, is required in the following cases. Ito ang exception. When the law requires that the contract be in some form to be valid. Pag sinabi ng batas When the law requires that the contract be in some form to be enforceable Or proved in a certain way Yung isa para maging valid Yung pangalawa para ma-enforce Para maging enforceable That's one and two And number three When the law requires that the contract be in some form For the convenience of the parties Or the for affecting third person Ulitin ko ha Tagalogin natin para mas maintindihan nyo Pag sinabi yung isa Puro sabi ng batas ito. Ano sabi ng batas? Una, kasi 
dapat sinabi ng batas na it should be in some form para maging valid, para valid yung ating kontrata. Pangalawa, para maging enforceable, para pwede siyang i-enforce. Okay? At yung pangatlo, para naman for the convenience or for the purpose of protecting the third person. Okay? Class, iba ang validity, iba ang enforceability, iba ang uh, purpose for third person. Pero lahat ito ay gagawin lang natin pag sinabi ng batas kung ano. Okay? Sir, ano ba yung pangatlo? Baka mas malito kayo kasi yung pangatlo, yung gag- i-convert mo lang yung isang private instrument to public instrument. Ito yung tinatawag natin na Office of the Notary Public. Pag pinatunotaryo nyo ang isang dokumento, ito ay announcement sa buong mundo. Okay? It is an announcement to the whole world. So, ibig sabihin pati yung third party. Okay? Kaya pag tinatanong kayo, panotaryo nyo yung dokumento nyo para ma-prove na itong dokumento na to ay kahit na sino pwede mong gamitin yung dokumento na yun. Oh, nandito ako eh. Uh, nawala ang aking nawala ang aking lisensya. O, oh, ina-announce mo sa buong mundo na nawala ang iyong lisensya. Hindi lang sa dadun sa naghahanap. So, yun ang ibig sabihin ng purpose of affecting the third person. Okay? Form of validity of a contract. There are rare cases when the law requires that the contract be in certain form for the validity. Ito yung mga donation. Okay? Donation ng ating uh, real property at saka um, donation of personal property na ang value ay nag exceed sa 5,000. Stipulation to pay interest. Dapat yan nakasulat. Contract of partnership. Class, dapat nakasulat pag kayo ay nag-thesis. Don't forget that. Form for enforceability of contract. Ito yung mga tinatawag natin. Matututunan nyo to sa mga different kinds uh, of defective contracts. Ito yung mga kailangan may, sar- may certain form para enforceable. Okay? So, ito ay discuss natin um, sa susunod na topic. Form for the convenience of the parties. Of course, in certain cases, a certain form is required for the convenience of the parties in order that the contract may be registered in the proper registry to make effective as against third persons. The right acquired under such contract. Ito yung kasama na nga rito, yung pagko-convert ito para maging public instrument. Okay? Contracts which must appear in a public instrument. The contracts covered by this uh, article are valid and enforceable. Though not contained in a public instrument or in writing, the public instrument is required only for the convenience and greater protection of the parties and to make the contracts binding as against third person. Ito yung ine-explain ko. Okay? In other words, the law does not require accomplishment of certain acts or con- contracts in a public instrument in order to validate the act or contract but only to ensure its efficacy so that after the existence of the act or contract has been admitted, the party bound may be ordered by the court in which the action or suit is filed to execute the document. Okay? Ibig sabihin, class, kung ba nag-usap tayo na agree, kumpleto, Cause, um, consent, and object. Nandun lahat. However, hindi natin sinulat. So, what we can do is, unang step, the first step, is gumawa tayo ng written contract. Kasi may contract na tayo oral eh. So, what we can do is now, put it into writing. Tapos, tsaka natin siya papanotaryo, uh, it is already uh, an announcement to the whole world. Kung ano yung napag-usapan natin. Okay? So, ngayon, question. Paano? Paano kung may problema yung kontrata? Ano mga pwede natin gawin? Ano mga pwedeng solusyon? Isa dito in class, yung tinatawag nating reformation as compared to annulment. O annulment kasi natin, binubura natin eh. Pero yung reformation, ano ba ibig sabihin ng reformation? Reformation is that remedy allowed by law by means of which a written instrument is amended 
or rectified so as to express or conform to the real agreement or intention of the parties. When by reason of mistake, fraud, inequitable conduct, or accident, the instrument fails to express such agreement or intention. So ito yung amendment or rectification ng isang kontrata. Inaalaw yan class. Okay? So, anong reason? Equity. Orders the reformation. Siyempre, equity. Para equal. Hindi pa pwedeng palit na lang tayo ng palit ng kontrata or bago tayo ng bago. Ba ayusin lang natin. Ayusin lang natin yan. So, para lang masabi sa isang kontrata, ano ba talagang napag-agrihan natin? Ano ba talaga ang napag-usapan? So, what are the requisites of reformation? Of course, there is a meeting of minds. between the two parties of to the contract. The written instrument does not express the true agreement or intention of the parties. That's number two. So, merong meeting of minds, pero yung written instrument, hindi naman yun yung napag-usapan. The failure to express the true intention is due to, oh, yan, important ito, mistake, inequitable conduct, fraud, sama yan, or accident. Tandaan nyo ito mga requisites na cryptocras, important ito. Okay? So kung reformation Napansin nyo may mistake Fraud or inequitable conduct Or accident So pwede siyang i-reform The facts upon which relief by reformation Of the instrument is sought Are put in issue by the pleadings Class ito pang mga abogado na okay? So kasi ang reformation class Pupunta kayo sa korte Para ipapaltan ang kontrata So ano yung mga kailangan gawin doon Yun ang gagawin nating issue reformation dahil merong isang parte ng kontrata na gusto mong ipabago dahil hindi yun yung agreement nyo. Okay? So, the court um, intervenes doon sa reformation of contract. Okay? And of course, number five, there is a clear and convincing evidence of the mistake, fraud, inectable conduct, or accidents. It, which is more than a mere preponderance of evidence. Dapat ito uh, substantial ang evidence. Okay? Reformation, distinguish mo from annulment. In reformation, there has been a meeting of the minds. Hence, a contract exists, but the written instrument purporting to, to embody the contract does not express the true intention. Okay? By reason of mistake, fraud, inequitable conduct, or accident. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, ang reformation, pwede lang yan kung merong meeting of minds. At, kung hindi man ay sulat, dahil sa fraud, mistake, inectable conduct, or accident, then pwede mong i-reform. Pero ang annulment class, there has been no meeting of minds. Okay? The consent of one of the parties being vitiated by mistake. Vitiated yung consent. Tandaan nyo ha? Vitiated. Okay. What else? Uh, mutual mistake. Ito ba yung pwedeng basis ng ating reformation? Mutual mistake is mistake of fact that is common to both parties of the instrument which causes the failure of the instrument to express their to, true intention. Siyempre, to justify in reformation, ang nung gagawin na? The mistake must be mistake of fact. Okay? Para pwedeng reformation, Doon sa tinatawag nating mistake Dapat mutual mistake At yung mistake must be factual And such mistake must be proved by clear and convincing evidence The mistake must be mutual That is common to both parties Dapat mutual, kaya nga mutual mistake The mistake must cause the failure of the instrument To express their true intention Okay? Bigyan ko na lang kayo ng example Pero pag ang mistake is mutual uh, mutual mistake is law, the remedy is annulment, hindi reformation. Seller and buyer, example, entered into a contract whereby sabi ni seller, sold the, to buyer his horse, pangalan silver. By mistake, the contract as written and signed by the party states that the horse sold is ang pangalan golden. Siyempre, here the instrument may be reformed on the ground of Mutual mistake Kasi pangalan lang naman yan 
Pero yung consent, yung cause, yung object are all um, in the same. Okay? Ano ba yung mga cases natin when reformation uh, is not allowed? Simple donation inter vivos or simple donation in the lifetime na walang condition uh, na na-impose. Because donation is an act of liberality whereby a person disposes, dinidispose niya kasi yung property niya gratuitously. Ibig sabihin, donation lang yon walang hinihingin kapalit. Who accepts it? So when the donor intends a donation shall take effect during his lifetime, it is a donation inter vivos. Lifetime niya. It is the uh, the distinguish mo siya sa donation ng pag namatay ka. So mortis cosa ang tawag doon. So ito naman yung mga donation na nagte-take effect pag ang donation ay ang doni ay namatay. Okay? Ano pa? Wills. A will is an act whereby a person is permitted with the formalities prescribed by law to control a certain degree the disposition of his estate to take effect after his death. So, ang will, hindi mo pwedeng i-reform yan kasi solo lang siyang guma. Sarili niyang akto yan. Okay? Because donation, like the making of a will, is both strictly personal and a free act. Okay? Sila lang ang may gusto niyan. Sino ang mga party entitled to reformation? Uh, either of the parties, of course. If the mistake is mutual, pwede sila magpalit. In all other cases, lahat ng injured party. So, pwede nila ipareform ang kontrata. And the heirs or successors in lieu of the party entitled. Okay? Next. Ano pa yung susunod natin? In interpretation of contracts importante class na alam natin kung paano tayo mag-interpret ng ating kontrata interpretation of a contract is the determination of the meaning of the terms or words used by the parties in their written contracts ano yung mga ginamit na terms diba? importante yan yung usage of words okay because the literal meaning controls when the language is clear. Contracts which are the private laws of the contracting party should be fulfilled according to the literal sense of their stipulations. If the terms of a contract are clear and unequivocal, the parties are bound by such terms. Kung ano yung literal na meaning, kung ano yung pagkakaitindi ng both parties, then yun ang magpe-prevail. Okay? Um... Ano ba yung intention? Siyempre, kasama yon. Evident intention of the parties over terms of contract. Where the words and clauses of a written contract are in conflict with the manifest intention of the parties, the latter shall prevail over the former. Ibig sabihin, yung intention over dun sa words. Kaya, importante, class, huwag yung paghihiwalayin. Huwag magkaiba. Parating magkapareho. Anong intention? Yun dapat ang nakasulat. It is a cardinal rule in the interpretation of contracts that the intention of the contracting parties should always prevail because their will has the force of law between them, not the words. So it is the will. Okay? So contemporaneous and subsequent acts relevant in the determination of intention. Anong ating ganon? Of course, pag sinabi naman natin na contemporaneous were the parties to a contract. Where the parties to a contract um, have placed an interpretation to the terms thereof by contemporaneous and or subsequent conduct by the acts in partial performance as interpreted may be considered by the court in determining its meaning. Plus, ito yung mga tinatawag natin na subsequent acts. Kung kahit na tapos halos tapos na yung kontrata, ano ba yung mga nangyayari susunod? So, impliedly, hindi siya na-express, hindi siya na-isulat. So, ano ba yung mga subsequent acts relevant dun sa determination ng intention ng mga parties para dun sa kontrata? Okay? For example, si Rico and si Emily nag-enter into a contract entitled contract of lease. Yeah, renta. 
although the contract refers to Rico as the lessor and Emily as the lessee, ang sabi doon that the possession and ownership of the land are transferred to Emily. So the title to the land was given by Rico to Emily. Who registered the land in his name? Before the date of the contract, Emily wrote a letter to Rico offering to buy the land. By their acts class, the parties clearly indicate that their evident intention is to make Emily the owner of the land. Hence, the contract should be interpreted as one of sale. Okay? Kasi yung acts nila eh, pinakita ron, subsequent acts showed it is a sale, not a contract of lease. So, yun ang pinaka-intention nila. Okay? Special intent prevails over general intent. Siyempre naman, because yung special intention, eh, kaya nga meron kang special stipulations. Kaya mo pinapakita na iba. Hindi pa pwedeng isama dun sa general interpretations or general intent. Okay? Bigyan ko yung example. Pero before that, as a rule, where in a contract, there are general and special provisions covering the same subject matter. The special provision shall control over the general provision. The reason for this rule is that when the parties express themselves in reference to a particular matter, particular, particular, the attention is directed to that. It must be assumed that it expresses their intent. Diba? Pag nag naggawa ka ng detalye, yung pinaka minute detail class, ibig sabihin, importante sa iyo. Binibigyan mo siya ng special intention. Seller sold this house including all the furniture. Example to ha, the term all. Dapat should not be understood to include seller's refrigerator which is distinct and different from furniture. Di ba? All furniture is very clear. Ang ref ba? Furniture? So, hindi dapat kasama ang ating ref. So, kung gusto mo isama, all uh, furnitures and all um, kitchen. Uh, ano ba tawag sa kitchen? O, kasama ng utensils. O, sabihin mo na, diretso mo na. Refrigerator, washing machine. Diba? Isama mo na yung lahat. Be very specific. Kung ako tatanangin nyo, be specific. Kung duda kayo sa mga terminologies na kitchen machines, kitchen utensils, kitchen tools, sabi mo na lang, sama mo na doon, refrigerator. Okay? Interpretation of stipulations with several meanings. When an agreement is susceptible of several meanings, one of which should render it in ineffectual, it should be given that interpretation. Ibig sabihin, kung susceptible siya sa maraming meaning, ang interpretation mo, pipiliin mo yung effective yung kontrata. Huwag mong piliin na hindi effective. Kaya ka nga pumasok doon. Kasi iniisip mo effective yung kontrata mo. Bakit mo i-interpret na hindi effective? Okay? Thus, if one interpretation makes a contract valid and the other one makes it illegal, dapat ang interpretation is ito ay valid. Okay? Interpretation of various stipulation of a contract. A contract must be interpreted as a whole and the intention of the parties to be gathered from the entire instrument and not from a particular words, phrases, or clauses. All provisions should, if possible, be so interpreted as to harmonize with each other. Yung parating, ako actually, paborito ko to, you always harmonize. Di ba? Harmonize is inaayos mo in a way na nagkakaintindihan lahat ng words mo, ng phrases mo, ng clauses mo. Example, si Rico list a house to Emily. In the contract, it was stated that, the, that Emily should not sublease the house um, without the written consent of Rico. Another stipulation therein contains that Emily should pay 1,000 additional rent a month should he violate this condition. So, Emily sublease the house without the consent of Rico. Meron bang right si Rico to eject Emily? No. In the light of the clause stating the penalty, the violation of the condition. Ibig sabihin, magbabayad lang. Hindi naman siya para tanggalin. Okay? What else? Interpretation of words with different signification. If a word is susceptible of two or more meanings, it is to be understood that the substance 
which is most in keeping with the nature and object of the contract in line with the cardinal rule that the intention of the parties must prevail. Okay? Kahit kung ito naman ay maraming interpretation, again, babalik tayo dun sa intention. I-harmonize nyo para dun naman tayo sa intention magkaka babalik. Okay? Resort to usage of custom in the aid of interpretation? Siyempre, kasama dyan. Kung, may, kung talaga nahihirapan tayo interpret, gamitin natin ang custom. Okay? However, necessary to prove the existence of usage of custom, the burden of proof being upon the party alleging it, di ba? Dapat kung sinang sabi, ay gamitin natin ng custom para kung interpretation natin. At siyempre, yung tao na nagsasabing eto ang ating gagamitin interpretation. Sample, sabi ni X, rendered service to Y, but the contract did not provide the amount of compensation to be made. So, anong gagawin? In this case, the amount must be determined by the rate customarily paid in the place where the services are rendered. Kung sa Pampanga ang bayad sa isang mason ay 500 at wala na pag-usapan, ay di 500 ang usapan. Okay? Interpretation of obscure words. A written agreement should, in case of doubt, be interpreted against who has drawn it or be given interpretation will be favorable to the other who upon the faith of which has incurred an obligation. Simple lang yung class. Gumawa ng kontrata, si A at si B. Si B ang gumawa ng kontrata. Dapat, class, uh, in, 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 ter- in terms of the obscure words, it will be interpreted favorable to A na hindi gumawa ng kontrata. Makuha nyo? Because B, siya yung gumawa ng kontrata, hindi pa pwedeng pabor sa kanya. Dapat pabor doon sa KA. Okay? Now, rules in case uh, doubt is impossible to settle. Ano ba? Pag magkaroon ng problema, ano ba ang mga rules natin dapat isettle? Okay? Siyempre, tingnan tignan natin kung anong klaseng kontrata. When a contract is gratuitous, If the doubts refer to the incidental circumstances of gratuitous contract, such interpretation should be made which should result in at least transmission, in the least transmission of rights and interest. Kung ang kontrata ay one-sided lang, ito yung mga donation, halos class. Uh, pag ininterpret ang kontrata, yung least transmission of rights and interest. Yung pinaka mababang transmission. Pag halimbawa, Uh, dinonate ko sa iyo yung kotse kasama ba accessories kung hindi na isulat hindi isasama okay kasi hindi naman kasama sa donation kotse lang o wag na isama na accessories kasi bigay lang naman yan pwedeng tanggalin yung mga accessories kung hindi na isulat that is in case of doubt onerous if the contract in question is onerous the doubts should be settled in favor of the greatest reciprocity of interest so, Ibig sabihin naman dito, pag on risk, yung sinasabi natin burden sa amin, usually sale, syempre yung ang pag-interpret ito, ano ba yung pinaka-beneficial on both parties? Okay? Beneficial para sa parehong parties. Doon nyo siya i-interpret. Okay? And of course, when the principal object of the contract, if the doubt refers to the principal object of the contract, such doubt cannot be resolved thereby leaving the intention of the parties unknown, the contract shall be null and void. The example, si seller sold uh, buyer his land, uh, seller has many lands, it cannot be determined which land was intended by the parties to be subject of the sale, therefore the contract shall be null and void. It is as if the parties have not entered into the contract at all. Okay? So these are interpretations of contracts, forms of contracts, and reformation of contracts. Our next topic topic will be defective contracts. Thank you.